Let's talk about the 11 things that your eyes can tell you about your nutritional status. Your eyes are the window to the inside of your body, and you can tell a lot about what's going on internally if you can connect the dots. The first thing we're going to talk about is conjunctivitis, and that's inflammation of the outer part of the eye. And a subcategory of that would be uveitis. If the outer portion of the eye is inflamed, it could be a virus, okay, as in like the pink eye, in which case you would want to take colloidal silver, and you can put just a drop in each eye about seven times a day. It seems to work like magic, and zinc as well. And of course, you wouldn't put zinc drops on the eye. You would actually take that internally, but you can definitely use the colloidal silver drops. Your eye could be also inflamed because you're sitting in front of the computer all day long. The blue light that emanates from your computer is very, very irritating on the eyes. So obviously, over time, it can get red. A great solution is a free app, f.lux. You can look it up, download it, and it just filters off the blue light. And of course, the less sleep you have, the more red the eyes are going to be. And if you can't sleep, that could be a potassium deficiency, a calcium deficiency, a magnesium deficiency, and a vitamin B1 deficiency. Of course, if you have allergies, that's going to make the eyes red as well. Uh, a good remedy for that would be vitamin A in cod liver oil. Vitamin D also will reduce the symptoms of allergy. And a combination product of vitamin A and vitamin D would be cod liver oil. There's also an immune disorder that can occur with the eye. It's usually involving an autoimmune condition where you have high levels of a certain T cell, T helper cell 17. Uh, I won't get into the details. All I'm going to say is that the remedy would be vitamin D. So if you take more vitamin D, you'll actually reduce inflammation. Vitamin D is a natural anti-inflammatory. So it works very well on autoimmune conditions and situations where your immune system is producing a lot of inflammatory effects. If you have like hemorrhaging of the eye, so you have these blood vessels that are leaking and part of your eye is red, you need vitamin C for that. Or you need more vitamin K. And it just so happens that the foods that are high in vitamin C and vitamin K are these things called vegetables. Uh, sauerkraut is a good source of vitamin C. Uh, any type of dark leafy green would be great for vitamin K. And a deficiency of either one of those can create a kind of a leaking of the vascular system in the eye. One thing you need to know is that when you consume sugar, the less vitamin C you're going to have. In fact, the chemistry of sugar and vitamin C are very similar. So if you were to have either high sugar in the blood because you're a pre-diabetic or a diabetic, or you're consuming sugar with vitamin C, the sugar will go in first and the vitamin C will be blocked. So the sugar actually creates a worsening of the vitamin C deficiency. If you have hemorrhaging in your eye, it could mean that your diet has been low in these two nutrients. Or let's say you're a smoker. If you are a smoker, the requirement for vitamin C needs to go way up. It's not just going to be like the basic 90 milligrams per day. I would double or triple that. Now, if you have a light sensitivity to the eye, that is a vitamin B1 deficiency. You can get that from nutritional yeast. There's another condition called vascular keratitis, and this is another inflammatory condition which actually responds very well to the B vitamins. It's interesting how some of these basic nutrient deficiencies can create all sorts of inflammatory conditions of the eye. Dry eye is classic low amounts of vitamin A. You get vitamin A from fatty fish, uh, egg yolks, butter, cheese, cod liver oil. But if you're consuming those foods and you still have a dry eye, it could be that either your liver or your gallbladder is not making enough bile. Taking purified bile salts will greatly improve the absorption of vitamin A, and that should help the dry eyes. But realize if there's liver damage, you're going to have to do something to actually fix the liver. I have a lot of videos on that. I'll put some links down below. And then night blindness is classic low amounts of vitamin A. I will say that arsenic poisoning will also create a deficiency in vitamin A and give you night blindness. So it could be either uh, you have arsenic poisoning or you're low in vitamin A. Vitamin A uh, supports the sebaceous glands, the sweat glands, the oil glands that are in your eye and your skin. Also, vitamin A supports the mucous membranes uh, in your sinuses, 
around the inside of the eye. So if there's any type of inflammatory condition on the inside of the eyelid itself, you need vitamin A. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books it was called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to The Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, a uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.